Ease is a long-running franchise that focuses mostly on the frantic action, unique settings, and much more. So, what exactly is this game? Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Donna is an action RPG that was released in 2016 in Japan for the PS4 and PS Vita, with future ports to PC, Switch, and to the PS5. Ease 8 is a unique title where Adol, one of the protagonists of the story, is shipwrecked on the Isle of Siren. If you're a normal person like me, you'll be probably confused by the title. We need a title for a new flagship series. The Legend of Adol? Generic. Oh! Adol's Adventure! Boring. Uh... Ease? And... Oh, I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. Anyways, Neon Falcom is an incredibly important company in the world of video games, many of their earliest titles forever influencing the industry. One of their earliest titles ever was Ease 1, Ancient Ease Vanishing, and it pioneered the action JRPG landscape with an incredibly unique battle system. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's hard to say serious when the battle system is just you bumping into people. Out of the entire Ease franchise, I've only managed to play in complete Lacrimosa of Donna and Monstrum Knock. I have played other Falcom titles, however, such as Trails in the Sky, Trails in the Sky Second Chapter, and Tokyo Xanadu EX Plus. All these titles are incredibly unique. Well, except for Tokyo Xanadu, as that feels a lot like Persona 4, and they're all filled to the brim with creativity. Today, we're not going to be talking about Falcom, because today, we're going to be talking about the masterpiece that's known as Ease 8, a revolutionary title in the franchise that will bring back the series back and bring the series into a new saga. Oh, hey, you're viewing Ease. <gasps> and you didn't think to invite me, Mr. Number One Ease fan and expert? Trademark. Ben, how the fuck did you know I was recording an Ease video? I didn't even tell you I was recording yet. How the fuck? I see your every move, Matt. What makes JRPGs unique? Is it stories set in wonderfully unique worlds? Well, well, for Ease 8, this isn't the case for the story. This is because the Ease franchise focuses on a lot of different parts and it focuses more on the action gameplay. This isn't an issue at all for me since I played a ton of games that don't focus on the story. That isn't to say that Ease 8 has a bland story. There's a lot of lore to the game and major story beats, though even with all of that, I was disappointed with the story at the end. Well, I wanted a game that had story beats that were connected to each other, but instead there are so many moments in the game where story arcs fell out of place and they don't connect. Parts like those in the story ultimately don't contribute a lot and I really wish they could have been written better in the story, so it contributes more. I will say that even though the story was a little disappointing for me, it is impressive what they managed to achieve, especially considering how the Ease franchise was handled before. I'll let Ven explain, since he's played a ton more games in the series compared to me. The series would start experimenting with larger stories after East 7, to which I'd argue East 8 had the best results. That was until East 9 came in with an even better story and the best in the series, no less. No, that's not an opinion. We only talk facts in this house. It is actually interesting to learn this, as before E7 released, Falcom's Trails in the Sky would be released, and it's a story-heavy game. Makes sense they'd also branch out to a bigger story for their action franchise. In Lacrimosa of Donna, we learn that the Lacrimosa is an event that occurs after a civilization flourishes. Basically, it's a great calamity that happens so the world can evolve. This is part of the story that was incredibly cool, but my issues from before still apply here. None of this is teased until nearly the end of the game, and because of this, the story doesn't reach its full potential. At first, I did find the ending disappointing, but as I heard from one of my friends who played the game, I actually obtained the second ending, which still wasn't the best ending. Though after a while, I did go back to the game and got the true ending, which was beautiful. That is what I would say if I actually did that. You see, I suffer from this illness that prevents me from fully completing games because I'm because I'm too busy playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I'd judge you more if Xenoblade 2 wasn't peak gaming. Though I will judge you for still not playing X. No. The beauty of Ease 8 is seeing firsthand of the Lacrimosa. I already knew that the Eternians were going to die. It was fate, but the more I spent with Donna in the past era, the sadder it was for me to leave them. The story isn't perfect, but I managed to perfectly express her struggle, and that's why I love the story. Donna refuses to give up hope, and seals herself away for the next generation so she can help them. It's with this that I was certain that Lacrimosa of Donna was a masterpiece, even with all the flaws and problems I had with the title. The story is about never giving up hope, and showing the strength of working together. But to be completely honest, the fishing is what makes this game so damn good. 
So, since the story isn't the main focus of the E-Series, what is? Well, it's got to be the gameplay, of course, and here, it's amazing. Eze is the third game in the series to be focused on a party-focused combat system, where each party member has a unique weapon that's either slash, pierce, or strike, with each one being able to damage a specific type of enemy. For example, Adol has a sword, Laxe uses a rapier, Rakota uses maces, and I use running away. No, seriously, I'm not even joking. A lot of enemies, and I mean a lot of enemies, are really tough and over your level, and that doesn't even include bosses. All these characters are cool and have a purpose in battle, except for the fat ass I had. I'd rather just use Rakota, since she was faster, had better skills, it was more fun to use. During combat, everything leads to another thing. Pressing the A button makes you slash an enemy, and doing this enough time gives you access to up to 4 skills. These skills are powerful, unique, and have different attributes. Using these skills helps to build up your extra skill, which is devastating and can wipe out enemies, get rid of a chunk of a boss, or even help cure cancer. Overall, the gameplay here is really good and addictive, plus I haven't even mentioned the other important parts of your moveset. Introducing the flash move and the flash card. Flash moving stops time and allows the current character that you're playing as to get a lot of attacks in, whereas flash guarding nullifies all the enemy attacks for a while alongside making attacks critical. Sadly, I am terrible at guarding and dodging so I didn't use them that much, but there is some equipment and armor in the game that raises your chance of dodging. Now it's time to talk about the bosses. They were extremely hard for me, well except for the final boss, but ignore that. Bosses here are really cool and I enjoyed them so much because they offered a harder challenge in the main game. I couldn't even beat one of the optional bosses on the island because they are incredibly tough, but I went back and it was a breeze in the park, though I still got my ass beat before winning. Another big part of the gameplay is the exploration. Here in Ease 8, we're stranded in the Isle of Saren, which has a lot of mystery and secrets here. Since this was designed first and foremost for the Vita, the game segments the areas, which feels weird when playing it on the stronger Switch, but ultimately, it's alright and I still enjoyed the game. The mechanic that I found that was quite cool was that you had to get the entire village to move a boulder, or to move something in order to reach a new area. This incentivizes exploration and finding new people. Recruiting new people also gives them a use way back at the base camp, known as Castaway Village. And I had a great time. Doing side quests was a nice way to build relations with the characters, which is also an important part of the game, which allows to unlock true ending of Lacrimosa of Donna, which I won't spoil here. And here's the final part I want to mention. Sometimes you'll meet Rakota's master, the Master Kong. Fuck, wrong one. By feeding him a ripe mango, you'll be able to fight him one on one, and if you win, you gain a new skill. It's a great incentive for exploring, and it makes you stronger. The music for East 8, to put it simply, rocks so fucking hard. One thing I didn't expect when I first jumped into this game was that the music was going to be so good and unique from other RPGs, thanks mainly to the heavy use of rock. Some of my favorite tracks in the game are the opening song, Donna, and Next Step Toward the Unknown. As for me, my favorites are Sunshine Coastline, The Sibylline Road, and Everlasting Transient. Shoutouts to the composers who made this possible, Yukihiro Jindo, Hayato Sonata, Takihiro Unisuga, and I guess Mitsuo Singh as well. The music helps a lot to make the game better, and helps to convey that the player that this is an action RPG with a lot of action. The music knows when to play with your heart when there's a serious moment, or when to get your heart racing when there's an action moment. A lot of games put a lot of focus on the characters, such as Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Fire Emblem Three Houses, or the entire Trails series. While Ease 8 does have a lot of great characters, overall it's less on the characters' personal story for the most part, and more on how they help out in the gameplay. There were a few characters that I enjoyed it a lot, however, and here they are. Donna is the last surviving attorney in an, an ancient race who once lived in the world of East. She's kind, caring, and most importantly of all, Hot. Jokes aside, Donna's a great character. I never expected to care for a character so much and to see her suffering. It was heartbreaking. There were little things that Donna could do to change the future, like to help Adol, but by the end, the kingdom of Eternia and all of her friends would perish. When translated, Lacrimosa becomes Tears, making the subtitle of the game better since now it's Tears of Donna. As one of the protagonists, Donna absolutely delivers, where she has three different forms to use. Her normal form, a stronger yet slower form, and the quick and weakest form. All three help to make Donna feel really unique. 
The next part might confuse you on why I put Adol here. Adol is a silent protagonist, something that I don't usually like a lot in video games. It can limit a character's potential and their story. As a character, Adol is an adventurer who's been all throughout the world with his best friend Dogi. As a whole and throughout the entire game, I didn't fall in love with him. Adol doesn't have a specific point in the story where he changes or does something unexpected. He stays the same throughout the entire story, which is fine, but why do I like him? Is it because of his design? Well, it is amazing, but the reason why I love Adol is because of this. Essentially, we're experiencing the Ease games a long time in the future in the Ease world. Adol ends up dying with hundreds of stories, and we're experiencing these games as he wrote them. The way that Adol wrote these are unique. He doesn't consider himself to be important in these stories, and that's why in these games he's a silent protagonist, and why these stories focus more on the side characters and the adventures themselves. I don't think I'll ever like an adult as much as Estelle or Rex, but this gives a whole new layer to the series that makes me appreciate and respect adult that I would never expect to do before. Okay, Ven, I said something positive. Please put the gun down, Ven. Thanatos and Rakota are two mysterious characters who've lived on the island for a while now, and in Rakota's case, for her entire life. I won't spoil much, but Rakota as a character disappointed me. Not because she's a bad character. She's great and I loved her. It's just that the mystery of her character is completely thrown out. We learn nothing and that makes me disappointed. She had a lot of potential, but it feels like the developers threw that chance out of the window. Thanatos, on the other hand, is Rakota's father and a man who washed ashore years ago before Adol did. There's a fair amount of mystery surrounding him, but before too long you meet up with him, and that does slightly disappoint me. And to give a shout to one of my favorite characters in this game, Laxia Von Roswell. She's a noble who starts out hating Adol purely for petty reasons, which made me not care much for her at first. I often see female characters in anime just be jerks because that's supposed to be funny, but I just find it irritating. Laxia, however, is not like them. She sees how her perspective on others is purely flawed, and starts to change through the course of the first few chapters, even apologizing for being rude earlier on. It's understandable where her bitterness comes from, but seeing her get over it and understand the world outside of her noble upbringing is super cool, and made her my favorite non-adult character in this game. As stated before, Lacrimosa happens periodically when a civilization flourishes. Only one member of that species will survive, and they become one of the wardens of evolution. Beings that are forced to witness Lacrimosas again and again. The ones we see in Ease 8 are Hydra, Minos, Nestor, and Era, with Dana and Adol being the next candidate. But of course it's thanks to Adol and Dana to prevent the upcoming Lacrimosa and to stop it for good. Even with all my gripes with the overall story, it's so interesting to figure out what happened to the Warrens of Evolutions in their timelines, and especially since he gets to see a snippet of their worlds at the end of the game. So in conclusion, Ease 8 is a great title and it's clear why so many people love it. The Isle of Saren is a vast and unique landmark in gaming and the lore surrounding the Eternians is so cool. Plus, the combat here is as smooth as some of the best I've ever seen in any action RPG. Of course, there are issues with it as any game does, but trying this out has me excited to try out future titles in the series. East 10 Nordics in the franchise looks great. It was awesome to talk about this game with Ven, as he's a Ease super fan. As of making this video, I have started Ease 9, and it's really cool. But in my opinion, it's not as good as, as my heart will forever go to Donna. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you?